celebrating her victory at the United States Figure Skating Championships and on her way to the Olympics. Today, her lawyer, Dennis Rawlinson, was defending her before a group of reporters gathered on his front lawn. Tanya Harding categorically denies all accusations and media speculation that she was involved in any way with the Kerrigan assault. Tanya is shocked and angry that anyone close to her might be involved. Then Rawlinson's wife, Diane, Tanya's longtime coach, told reporters that Tanya still expects to compete in the Olympics and will resume practicing tomorrow. Who is Tanya Harding? We found some answers in a student film made eight years ago by a friend who used to skate with her, long before anyone had ever heard of Tanya Harding. Well, I'm really different from my brothers and sisters because my brother, he used to steal a lot of things, and he still does. And um, he's like my mom. He doesn't have a lot of money. And he goes out and he gets drunk, and then he gets in fights and stuff. And I don't do that. Tanya Harding was only 15 years old when she talked about her mother and her now deceased brother to a student named Sandra Luco, who made this film for a project at Yale University. It was 1986, the year Tanya would drop out of high school to pursue her dream full time. And from the very beginning, there was only one dream, an Olympic gold medal and the riches that go with it. A mink coat world of fame and celebrity that Dorothy Hamill and Peggy Fleming had found so far from her world in Portland. At the time, she was living in a rental house, one of eight she'd grown up in, with a father who was out of work and a waitress mother who had already been married four times. All my kids except one were basically go-getters, where the other kids were all basketball, volleyball, tennis, sport-wise, that type of thing, hunting, fishing. Tanya eats, lives, breathes, eats because she wants skating. If it can't be done, she'll do it. <laughs> Guaranteed. And the bigger the you can't do it, the better and the best she'll do it. If there's no you can't do it type thing, she won't do it. But do you think that if you took that sort of challenge away from her? She'd be nothing. Absolutely nothing. It all began with a wrong turn out of a shoe store when Tanya was only three and a half years old. She saw a skating rink and had to try it. First time I got on the ice <laughs> was um, when my parents and I, my brothers and sisters were down lights and we were shopping. And I said, oh, Mom, I want to do that. And she said, OK. So I went down there, she put some skates on me. And I got up and I did it. Six months later, and barely four years old, her mother had already placed her in the hands of Diane Rawlinson, one of the best skating coaches around. At first I said, definitely not. And then every day for a week, they had Tanya in a very, very frilly frock at the rink, and she was skating circles around me while I was working with my competitive skaters. And I noticed that she did have a lot of drive, and she seemed to be very coordinated for a three-year-old. And... I decided that I'd like to give this a try. Why are we having trouble getting up and why are we having trouble landing? By 1986, as Tanya Harding prepared for her first national competition, you could see the determination and the raw talent. By then, a lot of people had begun to share Tanya's dream and to invest in it, especially Diane Rollinson, who spent hour upon hour with her. She and her husband, Denny, became like a second father and mother. As for Tanya's relationship with her real mother... My relationship with my mom is really bad. She is not... I mean, she's a good mother, but she's not a good mother. She hits me and she beats me. If something goes wrong with her work, then she takes it out on me. And everything she does... You could write all these comments off to the vivid imagination of a rebellious teenager if it weren't for the fact that other people say the same thing. While her mother made sacrifices for Tanya, 
there was clearly trouble at home, and the rink became her refuge. Tiny's family loves her dearly. Her mother does not really understand how to get the best out of Tanya. She tends to put her down um, to get her to perform. Her father loves her, and Tanya would do anything for her father. Even then, Diane Rawlinson knew that Tanya's troubled upbringing was a major obstacle to the dream. It had already cost her her first sponsor, a local attorney. Tanya was in the corner doing jumping jacks. She was five and a half years old. He fell in love with her, and they sponsored her for a year. And the reason they stopped sponsoring her was because they were very upset with their mother's actions. That competition time and the few practices they saw, Tanya's mother would be in the bathroom beating her with a hairbrush and saying, using bad language in the lobby and in front of other people, and they just felt that it upset them to see the situation at hand. However, Tanya's come a long way. She's been very successful in her skating, and I think they all would agree that if Tanya had not had her skating, that uh, she probably would be a runaway child right now and into a lot of things that we would not like to think of her into. No matter how far Tanya had come, money was a problem she could never get around. It cost between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars a year to develop a world-class figure skater. Danny and I largely have paid for everything she's done in the last few years. Um, Vicki Mills has donated her time. Um, we have a costume designer who has worked practically for nothing. Harlan Skate Company from San Francisco gives us a good deal on her skate. The rink has donated a lot of free ice time, but it's still really, really expensive. And even if all that expense leads to a gold medal, you still have to have the right image to reap the millions that go with it. There's presentation and poise, and Rawlinson and choreographer Vicki Mills had to turn a tough little duckling into a swan. Our plans for Tanya basically start with revamping her from her head to her toe with hair, makeup, nails, clothing, on and off the ice, street clothes, the total new Tanya. She can't come up to their standards no matter how hard we try. And of course that just, that really gets to me. No matter how hard we try, I mean it's always wrong. Which is perfectly normal. I can't do good enough in anything. I can't feed her right, I don't get her to bed right, I don't do anything right. This is fine. I could care less. I do the best I can and that's all anybody can do. I'm looking to make Tanya into a skater a little bit like Dorothy Hamill, a little bit like Peggy Fleming, a little bit like Linda Fratiani. Put them all together and mix them up so then we have a special Tanya. Because you've taken the best from everybody that's been the best. When Rawlinson and Mills took Tanya off to New York for the national championships in January of 1986, it was to be her coming out party. But she didn't have a single dress to wear to the ball. I'm not sure we can buy it. <laughs> she had been on the road before to Europe and up and down the West Coast, sharing hotel rooms with coaches. But on the ice, she was all alone. This was the event where she was supposed to be noticed, and all the hard work, all those long hours, would begin to pay off. I don't mind being the underdog, because once I skate and do my best, don't know who I am. I feel that my best is better than their best if I skate my best. <laughs> in New York, she didn't skate her best. She fell in the long program. But she skated well enough to accomplish her goal. She'd gotten people's attention, finishing sixth overall. I 
God have credit for it, Mom. Yep. Okay, let me do. Bye. What a bitch. What would happen? My mom said that, um, she goes, so I heard you missed your combination. You know, you didn't give me any credit at all for that. And I said, Mom, she goes, you did terrible. You know that. I said, you suck. And I said, Mom, I got half credit for it. She goes, so the rest of the program sucked also. And I said, Mom, no, it didn't. And she goes, well, just as long as you tried. And I said, I did. I have a telephone book here. I'm hungry. When it was all over, she got to dance at the ball in her brand new dress. Within a matter of months, she would meet Jeff Galuli, her future boyfriend and partner in a sometimes violent marriage. But on this night, in 1986, life was full of promise. Dating for Tanya is a ticket to ticket out of the gutter. Tanya skating will make her a worthwhile person in the community.